Yeah, this is how tall the the weeds are. This is the front of the quad. And this is about a month and a half, um, six, seven weeks maybe. Went from dirt to this. This is how good stuff grows down here. Then I told you I ran into Charlotte. I don't know if you can see her real good. Looks like she's hanging in the air right there. I'll go over and get a little bit better look at it maybe. You can see her web. It's probably 20 foot in diameter. I don't know if it's showing up yet or not. There it is. You can barely see it now. See it right there? And there's old Charlotte. She's about the size of a quarter closed up. Get the mosquitoes, girl. But we're filling up the mighty Dodge. Here you go. You know, I have a, a thousand, I'm assuming liters of water. That's what the side of the tank is marked with. Low enough to change saw, we're gonna do a little burning. Uh, Georgia has a permit program where you file for a burn permit. And uh, in doing so, you let all the local departments and powers that be know that you're burning something. Um, and you can, you tell the county, the area, the address, give them your phone number. Um, and our local fire department, from my understanding, is really good. Uh, it's gonna get better one day though, you know what I'm saying? Um, anyway, I, want to keep the water in the truck here i'll do it this way so you can see it um just in case you know i'm going to soak the area around where i'm burning uh, i'm going to open up that tank and drive around get the ground real good and wet so if it does get out of its uh its perimeter i can um probably slow it down quite a bit um, and then i'm gonna have a full truck not that that's a fire truck by any stretch of the imagination but It'll definitely knock it down. And I've, I've rode around the area. The grass is still green underneath the, you know, the stuff on the top. But with the burn permit, uh, basically what you're doing um, is you're saying that you are going to hand carry the vegetation or sticks or whatever you're burning um, and put it in a burning area. You're not using a piece of equipment and you're not setting large piles of stuff on. We have large piles, but I'm going to cut it off, you know, disconnect it from the the pile and bring it over by hand and then uh, the base the big log parts of it I'm gonna hook them to the quad and pull them up out of the way and we're gonna find some place to store them until we get posts and stuff made out of them um, that's what's happening first thing this morning so stay tuned hey one of our projects this week was to um, get the steps fixed on the camper it's it's been uh, these Redwood stained, I don't know if you can see them. Yeah, that's what we had. And basically those things were sitting on cinder blocks. So we basically had cinder blocks with those sitting on top of them. Cause as soon as you picked them up, they came into three pieces. So we uh, went and spent a bunch of money at Lowe's to build four steps. I'll show you what they look like here in a second. Um, just got the four step risers. Um, some two by tens. Uh, pressure treaters, put some legs on. I got them leaning in towards the camper, so if you lose your balance, you fall into it, stay out of it, uh, just for safety. Um, and then we picked up a couple of uh, two by eights that aren't pressure treated. Blah da. Because we're making a new bar slash tabletop in there on the wall to give ourselves some room. Um, we're hoping that this six by uh, foot and a half or whatever and these two beautiful chairs I get these from uh, the restore habitat for humanity five bucks a piece I mean if you if they were 20 bucks a piece it's worth it that place helps people who uh, 
don't necessarily have the means to get started. It helps them get started and get their lives going. And it's, they've changed thousands of people's lives. So if you have to buy something and you got a Habitat for Humanity place in your, um, your part of the woods, literally, um, yeah, buy it from them. You know what I mean? Like, even if it's, if, you're, if your neighbor or an elderly person you know says, man, I, I wish I had a chair for my backyard or something, stop by Habitat for Humanity. Seriously. It's like yard sale prices and it all goes to help people. It's crazy how they're not government funded beyond me. Probably because they get stuff done. That's why they're not government funded. So anyway, I'll show you a couple. There'll be some pictures of the steps. Uh, some pictures of the, the new table slash bar slash workstation for Ginger. Um, today's just been a day of trying stuff out. We tried, tried to burn. Uh, you probably will see part of that clip if you ain't seen it already. Um, and it's just too wet. Like everything's too wet. The trees that we ripped out, you know, a while back are too wet. The stuff laying on the ground is too wet. It's nuts. It's hard to explain. So, um, we're going to plan B with that. I don't know what that is just yet. Plan B is, uh, be ready to do something different, I guess. Um, maybe tomorrow I can get some stuff out of the venue. There's still some more trees that need to come out of the venue. They're pine. Um, some of the trees that we've already cut down, we're gonna section them off and set them aside to have posts made eventually. And then hopefully we get to go out and have dinner with Keith and Nancy tomorrow. That'd be awesome. Uh, I don't know what we're gonna do, but I guess stay tuned to find out. Hey kids, how are you? So, when you're uh, riding your four-wheelers, quads, depending on what part of the country you're from, um, you're going through places people haven't been in a while, spider webs, huge concern, huge concern. So there's a little thing we do to take care of that. You wanna find a relatively flexible stick, you know, not, not so dry that it cracks. You just weave it down in here. We don't really need it to be 12 and a half feet off the ground, I don't think. Uh, but you just weave it through here, down and around. I'm gonna shorten this up a little bit. My handy dandy Fisker's ax. If you guys don't have one of these, I highly recommend you find one because, I mean, and we ain't sponsored, trust me. Uh, but this little dude right here is sharp. Ain't that sharp. <laughs> See there, a couple of swings. Chops it right out. I think solid to put it on a little. So, actually, a fishing pole, an old fishing pole's got a broken tip. Those are the best because they're flexible. So instead of throwing them away, or if you can find one at a yard sale with a broken tip for a buck, it's definitely worth it. I just weave it back and forth in the grill. Just like so. Keep the spider webs and the sticks and smack you in your face. This was brought to you by things that I've learned from other people. You know, a lot of people have asked, you know, how do we get to the stuff done that we do? We have minimal amount of stuff. Um, we're slowly building it up. Like if, if I use a pair of pliers this trip, Leave the pair of pliers in the toolboxes down here, um, and then get another pair when I get home. Uh, but we're just about to the point where we don't need anything. And then the big trailers down here kind of put all the stuff we use on the big trailer. We we'll get ready to leave, take the big trailer, park it over where we're storing everything. That way, nothing gets lost, left sitting around somewhere else or whatever. Um, and if it's going to rain, we put it up early because we can't really do a whole lot in the rain right now. Um, but here, here's what it looks like.
mean, that's just a barrage, you know, like, just use shovel a little bit ago. But when you get done with the shovel, put it on this trailer. Just got done building this thing for the table. Put it, put it on the trailer. Even the stuff that we have left over, it's on the trailer. That's for another project that's coming up here soon. Another thing, so uh, when we built the bed on the trailer, or on the truck rather, we made the bed as wide as it is for the, the trailer. And when you're out, you know, around here, we don't have a workshop, we don't have, you know, it's all horses, we don't have all this stuff. Really nice to have an eight foot long, um, almost complete seven foot wide work area to lay stuff out, work on it. Um, when you need an extra hand, you can literally screw it to the bed do what you're doing, unscrew it. It's awesome. So this is stuff that goes back to Cincinnati. Uh, every time I come, I, I try to keep it to a tote. I bring my tool bag. Um, I brought brackets this time because we're putting a table up. I brought, you know, extra wrenches and stuff and a lot of stuff I didn't need, but it's really nice to have it because it's, uh, it's about an hour round trip to go get something, so. Carrying a little bit of weight from Cincinnati ain't too bad. Uh, I'm taking this chainsaw back, uh, get it serviced. I got a tree to cut in my own yard. Um, and we'll, uh, we'll come up with something for this, this fly trap. See how that works, but I'll take you inside the barn and show you what it looks like. Yeah, some of our previous videos, you've seen the barn. Uh, as the stuff, the vegetation dies off, it's easier to see what it used to look like. Um, if you go to Google Maps, this was a pretty decent sized barn. It was about 60 by 60. And it slowly caved in on itself. I'm guessing it was built back in, I'm, I guess, I, I'm assuming right after World War II about, given some of the materials that's in it. Uh, and for not having anybody take care of it or live here, it's, I guess did all right. Uh, but today we put the, the tarp pole in. Uh, it's 11 by 19 from Harbor Freight. Fit really good, but basically any leaks will be shuttered down to this wall over here. Uh, and then we just, just you know, just because I got shut out on one job don't mean I can't find something else to do. So basically just took a couple boards off the wall, made a little bench. There's the table we took out. And I mean, it's, it's everything I know where it's at. If anything ain't here, I know where it's at. You know what I mean? And when we leave, I'll probably bring the quad in and chain it up in here. So it'll just stay dry. And we'll park the trailer right here at the end and chain it to the barn as well. Uh, it's supposed to rain tonight. So that's why I'm hurrying up and getting everything put away. The stuff that goes back to Cincinnati, I'll go ahead and put it back in the car. Uh, and this is the beautiful sky here. Let's try doing one of them time lapse things and let you guys watch the clouds roll by. Yeah, here at the Sportsman Cafe, we always specialize in whatever's left over in the refrigerator. Put on a nice warm campfire with a Lodge name brand cooking plate. Um, you can hear it sizzling. It's so good. So stop on down and see us at the Sportsman's Cafe. It's so good. It'll make you go, mm, mm, mm.